Hi guys, today I want to talk to you about the, the back boost converter. So the back boost in these in his most basic form, it is a converter which can sustain an output voltage which, which is can, which can be higher on lower than the input voltage, but it has the negative polarity. So the most basic configuration is the you have the high side switch, the inductor here, and the diode. Bonk. So if you put this on a spice, with the, if you put this with the with the at this spice diode here. Let's put 4.7, which is a reasonable value for this. Let's put the, a Schottky diode. Let's put the, this is the gate. Let it call gate G1. And let's call it S1. First diode, first MOSFET of the list, as always. And let's, let, let us put a a bank of capacitor of 22 microfarads, like this. And let's put a an ohmic load of 1 ohm. This will be our output voltage, the out, and let's define the switching frequency, Fs of 200 kHz, and the duty, uh, duty cycle of 0.5. Uh, since the equation is uh, the out equal to minus d over 1 minus d. When d is equal to 0 0.5, you expect the output voltage to be minus the input voltage. So, if you put uh, 10 volts here, and let's also put uh, a bank. Here there will be a series resistor of 10 milli. Let us put a bank of 10 micro as a bulk capacitances and let us put here a low side ESR not just for the inductor but as a shunt so let's put uh, let's, let's put 10 milliohm as a shunt so this will be our reading voltage as VL, the voltage of the inductor. Uh, sorry, uh, let's, let, let's, let us call V, um, VRS, V of the shunt. So we will also design a reading, a reading stage for this. Uh, okay, so this is the inductor current. Inductor current red, and uh, let us run the simulation with a voltage, with a pulse voltage using uh, the high side gate 1 and the source connected to, to here. Remember also the classic pulse between 0 and 50 volts, a rise of 10 nano, 10 nano, and duty cycle over switching frequency for the period of time, and the, for, the, uh, for the period 1 over the switching frequency. If you do run the simulation, you will find out that the output voltage is not exactly minus the input voltage as you as you expect so you put this node let let us call it v in as you can see the input volt the, the the real input voltage will be um, quite noisy and it is and it is uh, and it is true and it is actually true if you do uh, if you do eliminate all these bulk capacitances like this the noise will be even worse so as you can see there is a, a very bit of noise here so let's use them and let's see that the current flowing to here so there is some current flowing to here so this uh, if you do not put this uh, LT spice will immediately 
cut all these uh, because it is because uh, uh, LAT spice will not consider will not consider these uh, capacitors basically because they are put in parallel to a voltage generator and so they are charged for definition and uh, they won't have any kind of use so it is suggested to put always a series resistor to emulate a, a real system at least of 10 milliohm or 1 milliohm and so you have also the the difference between the input current which is filtered and the inductor current which is not so beautiful to see and the input current so now um, uh, the out let's check the output voltage is minus 8 dot something 8 dot 6 that's because yeah, the, the, the diode is uh, uh, has a voltage drop which increases with the current load if I put uh, 100 as a ohmic load you will see that the okay it is going in, it, it's going into instability basically is in DCM it's it, is almost not so stable let's put the norm instead uh, so the transient is very long because naturally these converters are designed also to work with a certain ohmic load whoa and uh, if you put minus the input voltage, yes, you see that after 2 milliseconds of transient, you have exactly the minus the input voltage. Uh, naturally, the, the, the transient has increased, has increased because uh, you, you have increased the RC, uh, the RC net. Uh, you can, uh, for high ohmic loads, for instance, 1 ohm, you see that the transient is reduced, but uh, you have a a very very perceivable difference between the input the minus input voltage and the output voltage that's not because of, of the of the efficiency of the diode but because the, the voltage of this diode is increasing very very expo very in uh, in a perceivable way with the current so you have to cut this diode and to use the switch instead If you do put the gate here, of course, let's change the names. Let's put G2 and let's put S2. Let's use another one. You have to remember that. Remember to change the nets. And remember also to to make this waveform complementary to the first one to do this uh, add a delay over d over fs and the on time is 1 minus d by doing so you are saying that uh, when the high side is is when this the, the mosfet m1 is reaching the mosfet m2 is off and vice versa so now if you do run the simulation <laughs> It has even worsened a bit. <laughs> okay, this is embarrassing. Uh, maybe because there is, uh, maybe because there is this uh, this guy here, which is worsening everything. Ah, uh, I thought so. So uh, of course, uh, he was toggling a lot of efficiency from there, and I think that we should increase the output capacitance as well. So let's put a bank of 50 instead of 22 and we should be fine. Okay, we are uh, we are more nearer. We are nearer to the to the result still quite away still far away but now let's put a, a 1 million shunt at this point 
I don't I do not want to ruin ruin the efficiency of my converter so much. And let's read this current. So as you can see, the voltage here is uh, already quite clean, which is uh, which uh, I am quite impressed by this. And uh, okay, so let's read this current with a differential stage process. Uh, so let me uh, order a bit. Okay, so let's let's use a. Let's suppose that this is a non-differential. So let's do this instead. Let's put uh, 100 ohms, 100 ohms, and one nano. Now you can use the universal op amp two, which is supplied with, uh, let's see, five volts. Let's call it VDD. And also, of course, let's add a, even a back capacitor to this guy. Five volts. And let's use 5 volts here. Uh, IL. And let's call this IL, the inductor current. So you do remember how to design a differential filter, a differential stage. You have to put uh, every resistor to be equal to eliminate the, the common mode voltage. One kilo and one kilo here, and you have a gain equal to one. So if you do run the simulation now, you see that you have the. We can lower this a bit. So you see that you have a very clean, but the problem of this is that if you don't put a differential filter here, the thing is that you this voltage is never so clean because you have stray inductances, leakage inductances as well. So for instance, the shunt here has also a stray inductance of one nano. And if you put that, Strange enough, you don't see anything, but it is really very strange. You have also to consider the 10 milliohm of the DCR, so the ESR of the of the inductor. Uh, maybe today I'm being very very lucky, but. Uh, By the way, you always need a differential filter. In this case, since it is a low side, you can even skip this. Hey, and with this filter here, you're gonna have a, a very clean, a very clean IL. So this is the the true inductor current. Yes, more or less, we are very near to the. To the inductor current. So we have designed a back converter. Now let's use the another duty cycle here, for instance 0.2, and let's see how it does change. So let's add the output voltage here. As you can see, it is way lower than the input voltage. And if you add 0.8, if you use 0.8 instead. It will be greater, but still negative.
and for what regards the inductor current, you see that the waveform is preserved. So, we can end the video here, we have designed a back boost with the correct reading. Thank you guys for this video and see you in the next one.